Being an artist, I have more than a few bones to pick with AI art. And by a few, I mean a lot. You've probably heard of it. About two years ago, it crawled out of a burning dumpster to wreak havoc on the entire art industry, and now tech bros think AI art is the future and that artists have no place in society for some reason. Which, I've got some choice words to say about that, but let's save that for when it's actually relevant. If you're also an artist or have been keeping up with the AI phenomenon, you may be familiar with the hiccups that AI produces. Wonky hands, weird, incoherent text, a number of other inconsistencies. And I also want to bring up the fact that AI requires thieving from actual human artists to feed its own machine and has the potential to take away opportunities from artists who spent years honing their craft. Again, I'll get into that later because I have a lot to say on that topic as well. However, AI art also has another weakness. It can't be copyrighted. Well, not where I'm from anyway. So what does an artist with extreme beef against AI art do in this scenario? Copy it, of course! Honestly, it was very hard picking which pieces I wanted to do out of all the AI artworks I saved on Pinterest. The ones with just the outfits were out of the picture for several reasons, which left me with the quote-unquote character art. Of all the pins I had, seven in particular stood out to me, and of those seven, I ended up choosing three. Primarily to keep myself from tackling more than I could handle. I post videos every other week, and I only have two functioning hands. But regardless, if you're new here and you want to see the finished results of these AI art glow-ups, then make sure to like and subscribe and help me appease the algorithm gods. But with all of that said, here we go. Now, one thing I'd like to address before we feast. These works will not be a total copy of the original pieces. This means that the pieces will not be exact reproductions of the pieces that influence them. Although I say exact reproductions loosely because they'll still be in my style. Aside from changing poses, whether it's a subtle or major difference, I may change some aspects of a character's design under several circumstances, whether that's a matter of logistics or if I feel like the original design could use some refinement. And honestly, copying the original images one-to-one -one is kinda weird, even for me. Even though it's AI, and AI steals people's art to begin with. I guess you could call this fixing AI art more than anything else, but I digress. For anyone who may have made characters inspired by any of these AI pieces, I'm genuinely not trying to steal anyone's characters. This is just for fun, and to be honest, if I choose to turn these into original characters, I will most likely change their designs dramatically. Again, I'm covering three AI art pieces in this video. For each piece, I'll be going over what makes it easily identifiable as AI art, what parts of the original image I'm carrying over to my remade version, and what parts I'm changing. Even though I absolutely do not support the use of AI art as a complete replacement for the craft, I'm sure you can understand why. There are some things you can take away from this mess, I guess. Let's be real, it's only good for inspiration. Anyway, I've rambled for way too long, so let's just dive right in. So first up is this lady. Hey look, it's the lady in the thumbnail. So before we do anything, let's talk about what makes the original piece easily distinguishable as AI art. There are a number of inconsistencies in this piece, some more obvious than others. Starting with the wings on her head. There's very clearly one in this part of the image, but over here she clearly has two wings on her head. These two projections on top barely qualify as wings by merit of their shape and pass more for horns or antlers than anything else. There's a very peculiar nature to the way her hair behaves, and look at the width of her legs. They're inconsistent too. And that's not getting into the number one place to look when you suspect something might be AI art. The hands. Like, I get hands are hard to draw, I still struggle with them, but like... Did you really have to smash your keys into a prompt so you could end with something that vaguely resembles hands? Like, come on. Anyway, let's fix this abomination, shall we? I took inspiration from the character's pose all the way to the left of the image and modified it somewhat, also using reference from a pose I found on Pinterest. Praise be to Pinterest. The sketch phase for me usually takes about an hour or so, since I spend a lot of time studying the reference and making sure I have a sketch that I can follow without the risk of getting myself lost in the proverbial pencil marks every 30 seconds. And some of that time may or may not also be spent spacing out. Uh, don't look at me. I think my being a major perfectionist does partially contribute to my sketches taking so long to do, because even though I am slowly embracing the art of imperfection, there is a part of my brain that goes absolutely insane if I find something in my piece that seems even slightly off. But I guess I should find solace in knowing that I care more for the quality of my finished products than the AI bros do. 
Now, to be fair, if you're one of those people who's just using AI for inspiration as I am for this video without claiming the art as your own or something, or you're just messing around on character AI, then that's your prerogative and I'm not gonna stop you. Just be aware of what the creation of AI art entails. I'll get to that in a bit, but I want to talk more about the creative process for this remake first. Once the sketch was done, and it took a bit of struggling with her left arm in particular, it was time for the line art. As with most of my illustrations, I used the real G-Pen for optimal crunchy texture, and did the line art on a vector layer to save myself from any hassle if I had to adjust the lines later on. Out of all the parts of my art creation process, the line art is probably the part that takes the least amount of time. But for me, it's also one of my favorite things to do along with coloring. And speaking of coloring, in the last few months I adopted a new method of coloring that involves at least one folder and a crap ton of masks. Not the face masks, that's something else entirely. I filled out the character with a gray tone before setting that aside in a folder to use as reference for all of the masking layers I would need for the piece before filling all of the base colors in with a combination of the lasso fill and the selection tool. I also used some gradients for that extra pop of color, and also to make things a little more… chef's kiss. I kept most of the design for the character's dress, only changing the design of the bow and the shirt collar and making minor adjustments to the sleeves and the corset. I also really like the roses she has in her hair, so I incorporated those into the redesign as well. To make things easier for myself, I changed the design of those weird looking feathers on the top of her head and simplified the other pair of wings she has on her head. I did struggle with that quite a bit, but I made it work out in the end. Oh, and I also kept the third pair of wings she has on her back. I did make one other change, well, actually two. I simplified the gold leaf thingies she has all over her dress, turning them into a single metallic piece on the left side of her blouse, and also a pair of dangly chain thingies attached to her skirt and disappearing underneath her corset. I also took these weird looking red strands and made the whole underside of her hair this pinkish red color. Honestly, I think drawing the hair and the folds of the clothes were some of my favorite parts of this drawing besides the coloring and the line art. But before I start to ramble, let's briefly get on to the other thing I wanted to address that I feel needs to be said regarding the parasitic relationship between human and AI art. The main reason why AI art is so unethical is because it requires and literally cannot exist without people feeding existing art into its database, turning all of the artwork it's been fed into some sort of sewer diarrhea monstrosity. In other words, it requires art theft. There's really no other way to put it. Again, if you're doing it for inspiration or are just messing around with it to make those silly cursed images that were floating around in the early days of AI generators back in 2022, that's your prerogative. I mean, again, as long as you're aware of how AI generators work and you're not trying to degrade every human artist you come across, but I'll talk about that later because as I said, I have a lot of choice words regarding that side of this whole mess. But the way I see it, AI art has no place in the art world for this reason, and a bunch of other reasons that ultimately trace back to this main issue in particular in one way or another. Now, are there benefits to AI? Yes, there can be. Just not in the art industry. If used correctly, it can theoretically make advancements in science and information technology and can also lead to advancements in medicine. Aside from the fact that it should not be used as a means to replace art, it should also not be used to write your essays for multiple obvious reasons. I still cannot believe there are people who have actually done that. Stop cheating on your essays! Anyway, back to the art. For the shading, I used a new layer that I set to multiply, and for the highlights, I set another layer to add glow. Or is it add parentheses glow? I'm so confused. Anyway, I used a combination of reds and purples for the shading, and I used a red color for the highlights. There were also some stylistic things that I took from the original image, such as the hair highlights and also the rim lighting, or the light greenish highlights around the figure, which I incorporated into my redesign. I spent some more time playing around with the highlights and also looked at some reference for the jewel in the center of the character's ribbon, and after that it was just a matter of coloring the line art for that extra level of flavor. But other than that, that's the first redesign finished. Before we get to the other two, let's put the two side by side for a moment. I am probably going to keep this character, but there will be some things that I will change like the placement of the wings on her back and the number of wings that she has in general. I want to keep the roses and the general color scheme though. I also want to do something with the general rose motif and play it up a little bit. But other than that, let's move on to the second image. Next up is a little fellow that I have decided to call Reindeer Kid. Because what in the literal hell is this text? I swear, I can't tell what AI is worse at, copying text or copying hands. And where is Bro's mouth? Okay, let's put that aside for a bit. 
Once again, let's take a look at everything wrong with this monstrosity. His left foot looks like it's been chopped off at the toes, the fingers of his right hand look like they're fusing with the device he has next to him, and speaking of the device, it's supposed to be touching the ground if he's holding it like this. In other words, this is a mess. Fortunately, that's why we're here. So let's start with the things that I took away from the original image. Once again, I mostly kept the general concept the same, making some changes either for the sake of logistics or for the sake of cleaning things up a little. I also kept the engineer mechanic concept that he seems to have going on, and I also made his face rounder than I usually make it. I mean, with a face like this, I imagine he'd be fairly young. And I also changed the shape of his hair somewhat, but I still chose to keep the fluffy element of the original image. Another thing that I added entirely because of the antlers were the reindeer ears. This is most likely a me thing, but the fact that he has human ears in the original image in spite of him having antlers drove me insane. If you're gonna make him a deer, you gotta go all the way with the concept. Maybe I shouldn't say that, because that would involve actually turning him into a full-on deer, or reindeer in this case. Hopefully you get what I mean. The process for this piece wasn't much different from the first one. Usually with character art, it's a matter of conveying essential information about that character to the viewer. Whether it's the character's personality, lifestyle, or how they would interact with the environment they've been placed in. I imagine this character would be a very studious fellow, someone who takes himself and his work very seriously, and also low-key easily flustered, but I guess that's something to explore later down the line, since I'll most likely be keeping him as a character. As a matter of fact, he already has a name, but I'm still open to suggestions. But going back to the topic, character illustrations are like telling a story in a way. The same can apply to paintings, sculptures, things of that nature. There's something about trying to discern the mood, the intent, and or the emotion of the subject matter in an authentic human-created piece of art that just hits different. There's almost always something behind what you might see on the surface. Despite what some people may think, yes, art has a purpose in society. Art is meant to inspire people, elicit certain emotions in the viewer, spark debates, convey important messages that the consumer can take away from the experience, and the list goes on. Art is, in essence, the foundation of the culture of human society and one of the things that nourishes the human intellect. But hey, not everything has to be an epic sweeping magnum opus either. Some people just want dumb entertainment and that's fine too. And one more thing for anyone who thinks art isn't a real job. Do the whole world a favor and go outside for the first time in your life. Trust me, it'll clear your head. Art is everywhere you look. If the art industry isn't a valid industry, then by that logic, neither are architecture, fashion, or food. And come to think of it, we should probably just stop listening to music on the radio too, if that's the train of logic we're going to go down. Again, I could go on with this for hours. Also, that chair you're probably sitting in right now required at least one designer to draft up the idea for the finished product. You're welcome. I know I probably sound like I'm rambling right now, but the AI art thing is something I've wanted to discuss on the channel for a while now, and honestly, I'm not sure what else I can talk about without going completely off topic. And the drawing process for these pieces was fundamentally the same throughout, so I would have just said a rehash of the same thing three different times if I didn't tackle this issue on the side. I will most likely cover the situation more in depth in the future with another video, since my thoughts on the subject could qualify as a whole video essay, but yeah. Anyhow, despite the drawing process being 70% the same for all three images, there were a number of decisions that made each process different. Initially, I wasn't sure what to do with this guy's contraption thing since I perceived it as an important part of his concept, but this is more than anything else meant to focus on the character himself. So I relegated the machine to the sidelines and decided to save that part of the concept for another day. Going on first impressions, he'd probably be some sort of engineer or mechanic, but maybe that's a bit linear. Who knows, I don't. Either way though, there are a lot of possibilities going off of that alone. I stuck to a cooler set of colors, as blue is a cool color. I did experiment with warmer colors for a bit, but it just wasn't the same and it didn't give me the results I wanted. Particularly with the gradient in his hair. While I was sketching, I drafted a pattern for the cuffs of his sleeves and the long panel thingies attached to his waistcoat, but I scrapped that and decided to freehand a new set of patterns with the lasso fill tool. It was a bit of a pain, but I eventually finished that bit up. Fun fact, I made it almost three quarters of the way through this piece in one day, which is practically unprecedented for me as I tend to be a slow worker. I didn't know I was this powerful. Usually it takes me a few days to finish an artwork, but there are multiple factors that contribute to this as well, like taking care of other projects on my plate. But I'm getting off topic. 
For the metal bits like the coat buttons and the clasps of the waistcoat, I used a combination of purple and yellow for the shading and the highlights. I really like how I rendered the metal in this piece, and I may have looked at reference when doing so. Reference is your bestie! After that, all that was left was to color the line art and add the background, and then redesign number two was done. This character's design will mostly stay the same, but I might play around with the colors some more, even though I intend on keeping the cool color scheme, and I do want to explore that mechanic concept as well. Now hold your horses, everybody, there's still one more AI monstrosity to fix. Last up is the one that I probably struggled with the most. Honestly, me taking this piece on last must have been some sort of blessing in disguise, because with the way I struggled with this drawing at first, my entire production timeline for this video would have been greatly impacted if I had chosen to draw this one first. Yeah. At first I wanted to do something closer to the original image in terms of the character's pose, but when I came back to the piece the next morning, I realized I wasn't happy with it, so I had him sit down instead. While staring menacingly! Oh, before I forget, let's assess the mess that is the original image. Or maybe I should say images, because I found two images of this guy. What a well-dressed fellow. It's a shame his hands couldn't keep up with his style. Not only that, the statues in the background look like they drank a generous helping of the Grimace Shake, if anyone remembers that meme. Here his horns are inconsistent in shape, and what is his hair even doing here? Physics? Who is she? Also, there's this thing, I guess. But anyway, you know what time it is. I feel like I was a bit more loose with the sketch than usual, but I still wanted it to be somewhat coherent when it came time to do the line art. You may have noticed that I played around with some parts of the sketch, like that fabric thing over the character's left shoulder, as well as the candles behind him. At first I wanted to do something with the statues, but in the interest of time I decided not to, and I just went with incorporating the candles instead. I want to explore this character a bit more because I have some idea for a motif and a general concept for him that has to do with the candles. Mmm, candles. Uh, anyway. After a lot of painstaking corrections and figuring out where everything went, it was time to do the line art. But I will disclaim now that I somehow missed one other very important thing. The size of his left hand. It's bigger than it should be, and by the time I realized, it was too late to change it. But at least one of my friends got a kick out of it, so this is not a complete loss. And I guess it just goes to show you that even with years of talent, there are still slip-ups. And talent isn't something that comes naturally anyway. Not usually. It's the result of years, sometimes decades, of practice and studying. To speak on personal experience, I've been drawing since I was very little and was self-taught until I went to college. And even then, I didn't really hit my stride with my art until after I graduated. And I went to art school. <laughs> the irony. I think what really helped me improve and get me to a point where I finally feel satisfied with my art was doing brief studies of the pieces that I liked. That is to say, finding things about those artworks that I enjoyed and figuring out what to take away from them. But also learning some tips and tricks from other artists. It's kinda how I picked up my current rendering process. My point is, anybody can learn how to draw even if you think you can't draw a simple stick figure which, not gonna lie, is very easy to do in the first place. So learn how to draw today and save yourself the pain of having to keyboard smash some prompts into an AI generator. Yes, it is an uphill battle, but when you put the effort in, it will change your life. Back to the drawing, I kept the formal aesthetic for his design, even though his design is probably the most different out of all the characters I redesigned. And by that, I mean his design is the one that I made the most changes to. I mostly stuck to black and white, but I also messed around with some purples and blues. Upon a closer look, I realized he had silver eyes in the original image, even though I initially read it as a sort of purplish color. So I tried emulating that somewhat while still putting my own spin on it. I actually wanted the color of the candle flames to match his eyes since I want to incorporate the candles into his general concept, as I said. Maybe it could be some sort of ability that has to do with fire or with candles specifically. Or maybe his power could involve any form of light source. There's a lot of possibilities. But anyhow, I changed up the collar of his jacket, gave him a tie thingy and a nifty waistcoat. I think I might have a thing for waistcoats because this is becoming a problem. However, I kept the general hairstyle as well as his horns from one of the images. For the coloring, I wanted to make the lighting dramatic and illustrate the fact that the character is in a dark place with the candles being the only light source. I actually used to struggle with this kind of lighting, but I found that blocking in the shading color in the multiply layer and refining it from there really helped. And speaking of struggles again, there was one other thing I had to contend with. 
Even though I kept his hairstyle for the most part, I still wasn't completely satisfied with it, and well into the coloring stage, I made the decision to change the shape slightly. I was thinking, oh crap, it's too late to change it. But I was able to figure something out, and it was a matter of editing the layer masks and the base color layer, along with using the blending tools to make the changes look seamless. I'm actually pretty happy with how it turned out. Then I went in with an orange color for the glow layer, using a combination of the soft airbrush and the regular G-Pen. Even though I got the idea from the original image of the bird lady, I found that I really like the highlighting style for the hair, and in fact, I might actually use this highlighting style going forward. Scandalous, I know. But hey, there is exactly one silver lining in the monstrosity that is AI art. This is that silver lining. The last thing I did was render the candle flames using a combination of pink, yellow, and purple, as well as a combination of the multiply, hard light, and glow layers. Then I went in with the airbrush to add another glow effect to the flames, and as always, I colored the line art for that finished look. And with that, the last AI copy... Well, okay, this is the farthest thing from an AI copy, but still, is finished. In spite of this being a very trust-the-process kind of artwork, I'm still very satisfied with how the piece came out, and it might actually be my favorite of the three. There's still a lot that I want to explore when it comes to this character's concept, as I said, so I will definitely get to that if I have the time to do so. And honestly, I might iron out his design a bit more. But that's going to do it for this video. This is the longest script I've written in a while. It's a good thing my voice is still intact. Probably. But I had a lot of fun with these drawings, and depending on how well this video does, I might turn this into a series. So if you want to see that, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. We have spaghetti! Also, if you're interested, make sure to check out my other social media accounts in the description. And if you want to support me further, my Kofi and my Etsy shop are also in the description. Do you have a favorite of the three artworks? Let me know, and also leave a yarn emoji in the comments if you made it this far. Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. And may the downfall of AI art be utterly merciless.